guys, it's Dom. Today's video is going to be a book review. The book I'm reviewing is Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon, which is a YA sci-fi novel that I received in a page habit box a very long time ago. So this book is about Aster who lives on the HSS Matilda and she lives in the low decks and the whole system of the spacecraft is basically antebellum south. Earth blew up so now Matilda's trying to find the promised land set to them by God. The higher ups are shitty shitty people, blah blah blah. Aster finds her mother's diaries and then discovers that Aster's mom was hiding something so she goes forth to find out what it was and to do what her mother could not finish. Right off the bat, I'm going to say that I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. First of all, this book has a lot of POC rot. Aster, our main character, is black. Most of her friends are black because that's what her, her unit is. And then there's hints of Middle Easterns. And then there's also white people. There's hints of Hispanic. There's hints of everyone mixed into this book. This book also has a lot of LGBT plus rap. Aster herself is said to be intersex, I believe. It wasn't said straightforward in the book, but other than Aster, you have one deck who actually, their pronouns are they their pronouns. One character called the Surgeon identifies as queer. And I'm assuming the author themselves is LGBT because they do go by the they their pronouns. So this author brought brought in things from their real life into this novel. Obviously when it comes to something like this the most important aspect is the world building and although the world building was very very simplistic I thought it still did a great job. River Solomon didn't over explain anything but they also didn't under explain anything so I was able to picture things and I was able to differentiate the time era of the book to our current time era and I congratulate River Solomon for this because I know the big problem I have with a lot of YA novels is that their world building is very very not good <laughs> to say the least but this one was simplistic if you're not for simplistic explanations I wouldn't recommend that to you but if you are for simplistic explanation then the kindness of goes is the book for you and leading off from the simplistic description of things this book actually came off as something that should be a series and to be honest I was surprised that Goodreads didn't I was surprised that Goodreads only said an unkindness of ghosts and not an unkindness of ghosts number one like they do for series so I was expecting to have absolutely no closure at the end or anything but we get that we get the closure and although it starts off as something you think should be a series it, de it does end on a good note and this is actually a perfect standalone if you are looking for more standalones and the last thing I want to mention about this novel is the science. The science in this novel is insane. It, it, it's very well researched. You could tell the author put a lot of time and energy into finding these things because there's a lot of chemistry, there's a lot of physics that I, I have a hard time understanding. But then the way River Solomon explained it made sense to me. And you could just tell Aster was this very, very intelligent person and yeah. <laughs> Now I want to discuss some cons that I have. The first con is about the plot itself. Although the world building was great, I thought the plot lacked just a tiny bit, especially in the beginning. In the beginning I had no idea what the plot was supposed to be and that, and that was my thought process for a few pages and it took until maybe about a quarter way through the book to finally realize, okay, this is the plot, the rest of the stuff was just building crap so you can understand later. And I think an important aspect that's needed to make something a great book is when you know what the plot is right away. I can't really blame River Solomon for this just because this is their first novel and they're going to learn from their mistakes as time goes on but if I were sitting next to them explaining oh hey maybe this could use more help this would be one of the things I would mention. I want to mention something that's in the back of the book. I don't know if this is on the Goodreads or Amazon description but in the back of the book it talks about how Aster is always called a freak or an ogre by everyone and that kind of affects her, kind of doesn't. But when you actually read the book, you really see that. Obviously, it's it's very clear that the upper deck people don't like her, but they never really call her a freak or an ogre. They simply don't like her because one, the color of her skin, two, she's a low deck. So they automatically hate her. But I think, I, I think there was only like one or two scenes where someone called her these names. So if you're going to put that in the back of the book, I want to see that explored more in a novel. And if it's not explored more in a novel, and if you don't need it to be explored more, then don't put it in the back of the book as a way to sell your novel. Another con I had about this novel was the languages. 
So it wasn't that there's was too much information about the languages, it was that there is absolutely nothing about the languages. Each deck has their own language, whether it's upper, middle, or lower, and then within each deck there's dialects, so that was the only thing described. Only the lower deck dialects were kind of described, but we only know one word, which is mom and dad, and like, so not one word, but we know like a f maybe five words, and then River Solomon does explain like minor dialect changes between letter decks, but as a whole, lower deck has this one language, middle deck has theirs, Upper Deck has theirs. Aster would switch off languages every now and then. She would, she, it was often described as blah blah blah, Aster said in Upper Deck. But what I wanted to see was a description between the three. Because whenever Aster spoke the Upper Deck, the Upper Deck people were surprised. So it's like, how different is the Upper Deck language compared to the Lower Deck? That was never described. So, but because it was never described, I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding why it was so different. So is it different as in like how Italian and Spanish are different? Or is it different in the sense of how Italian and German are different? <laughs> I need more explanation. My last comment when it comes to this novel are the point of view switches. I personally thought they were completely pointless because every time- this book is, this book is separated into about four or five parts and every time there's a new part, there's a POV switch. And on Goodreads, because I did make a review on Goodreads, but I mentioned three points. One, I just thought they were unnecessary. And the reason I thought they were there was no point to them was just because, personally, I thought they were kind of a cop-out, meaning they were just a cop-out to reveal important info. But in reality, the important info that was revealed wasn't really important to the plot at all. In fact, the only point of view switch that was semi-important was Giselle's, because that was the only one where, like, revealing information was revealed. <laughs> but when it was Astor's grandma or when it was the surgeons, it wasn't really... They didn't contribute to the story, at least to me. At least for the surgeons, that's when we find out that he is queer. But that's about it. Like, plot-wise, it did nothing. And I think my biggest problem with the point of view changes is that the... Like, the actual point of view itself didn't make sense to me. Throughout the book, Aster's point of view is told in third person, but when it switches to someone, it switches to first person, so that really screwed up the flow for me. I think if you really did want to do point of view changes, keep it in third person, because I think that would actually make the flow a lot better. So what I'm trying to say is, if all the point of views aren't going to be a third person, I think they're pointless, they really screwed up the flow. And that is the end of this extremely, extremely rusty review. I haven't reviewed a book in a while, and I forget how nervous I get when I'm talking to nothing but a camera. I hope this somewhat sparked your in interest. Probably didn't, but my be. But I did give it 4 out of 5 stars, even though those cons were kind of up there. Critically speaking, I think I would give this book more so like a 3 out of 5, but it did keep me reading. I ca it kept me interested. I was very interested in the world building of this book, and I think River Solomon, for a debut novel, this was actually very, very good. So River Solomon does deserve all the praise they get, and that's really all I have to say about this book. So let me know if you read it or if you are interested. And I will see you guys later. Ciao, Tutti.